Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video I'll talk about my most anticipated PC games that will release by the end of this year. I'll cover each of these on this channel in a way or another for sure. Reviews, playthroughs, guides, you name it. If the game's good, I'll play. This list is in no particular order by the way. So let's get on with it. Path of Exile 2 needs no introduction, I believe, but just in case you lived under a rock or something. This is a next generation free-to-play action RPG from Grinding Gear Games, featuring co-op for 6 players. Set years after the original Path of Exile, you will return to the dark world of Rayclast and seek to end the corruption that is spread. Path of Exile 2 features a brand new campaign with 6 acts, 100 distinct environments, 600 monsters and 100 bosses. <laughs> the game will feature 12 character classes, new improved skill gem system, dual specialization, 700 equipment, base types and every single one has its own unique item for you to find. Mm, unique bosses that look pretty badass. Anyway, in game of course, and it's usual decent monetization. I said decent and not great because Dash tabs, of course. I'm pretty pumped about this game because while I love the first installment, it had so much bloat by the end. If you don't play that game for a year or two, you don't understand much when you return. And I didn't have uh, time to properly play it lately, so I didn't touch it. But Path of Exile 2 promises a more, I don't know, casual experience while retaining the core of what made the old game a classic. I never had issues with the trading in that game. I know a lot of you hated the way you could trade in the first game, but I found it pretty easy to do and let's be honest, who here thinks devs will do a better job with an in-game auction house than those people who created the trading website, or uh, not me for sure. I'm talking about filters here by the way, you could search for the exact item you wanted on that and I doubt it will be like this in-game. But time will tell, this might age like me. Anyway, another reason to think this game will be glorious are the bosses. They nailed boss fights in my opinion. The balance in speed of telegraphed abilities and abilities themselves seems just right. If you compare them with with how Blizzard does this, I'm looking at uh, you Lilith, there's no contest really. Anyway, Early Access was just announced and it comes out in 15th November this year. Here's the deal. These past few months, We've had an outpour of positive reception from you guys around what we're creating, and we really want to get that game out to you sooner. That's why we're diving right into early access on September 24th, 2024. The Forever Winter is a co-op tactical survivor horror shooter where you and your squad must loot the dead to survive under the shadow of terrifying and gargantuan war machines locked in a never-ending conflict. You're not the main character in this one, you are here hoping you scrape enough loot to survive. I like the scale in this game, it looks like you're going to see pretty epic battles unfold while we sneak around, you know. Dev said their dynamic encounter system make the AI react intelligently to your action. I sure hope that's the case because this makes the world feel alive more than anything to me. You'll need to pick one of the two great superpowers, loot and make it out alive. While the enemy faction might ignore you at first, as you become too disruptive to their plans, they try to end you. I also like the art direction of this game, as it might look too dark and bleak for some of you. I think this is an apocalypse done right. Good job. I can't wait to play this. I'll cover it on, on my channel for sure. Check out Fandog Studios team page and wishlist uh, Forever Winter. Early access comes on 24 September this year with a quarter one of 2025 release and it will cost only $27 if you get it in early access and I suspect the final price will go up when it releases but that's normal. The team has been rocking around the clock to incorporate a ton of the feedback you guys gave us and we can't wait to share the progress. Now I don't believe anyone should have to pay more than 50 USD for a game. And if you want to support the team above and beyond the initial price point, that is awesome. And we really appreciate it. There will be a special edition with the game's soundtrack and Jason's awesome tunes. But that should be your choice based on how much you guys dig the game. So the Forever Winter is going to be $27 at early access. There will be zero pay to win solutions. You will earn your gear via skill or luck and you will not be able to buy your way into Nirvana. 
you will never be charged for a new character because that's the way it should be when you buy a game. You will not be charged for maps, guns, additional quests, new bosses, and more. That nickel and diming shit is for the birds. So yeah, good one Fun Dog Studios. Stay cool. And good luck with the release. Discover the vast Cornobill extraction zone full of dangerous enemies, deadly anomalies and powerful artifacts. Unveil your own epic story as you make your way to the heart of Cornobill. Make your choices wisely as they will determine your fate in the end. Stoker 2 Heart of Chernobyl is an upcoming first-person shooter survival horror game developed by GSC Game World, a company that had to deal with all kinds of shit since they started working on this in 2018. Covid, war and the fire in their studio a while back. Set in a post-apocalyptic world, the game takes place in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. I don't know why they changed their name. A highly contaminated area filled with dangerous anomalies, mutated creatures and also hostile factions. Player will explore this open world environment, uncovering secrets, completing quests and battling various threats. The game promises a deep narrative, immersive atmosphere and a blend of horror and action elements making it a highly anticipated title for fans of the genre. And yes, I'm a big fan of it. This is the most anticipated game this year for me. I am loving what GSC did with A-Life AI in their previous games. The emergent gameplay that happens because of it is just good. Is one of the reasons I love to play Stalker Gamma so much. The world and its inhabitants come to life for real. Actions carried out by the player pose ripples to the actions of the AI, updating as the player traverses the world. The idea behind the simulation is to make it seem like AI between loading zones are moving and are active, you know. Besides this, I love how the game looks. Yeah, I'm aware on places it looks a bit too good and a lot of companies downgrade the visuals at release. But we can only hope, right? Real Engine 5 at its finest. Very atmospheric, sharp looking game. I can't wait to see old stalker areas refreshed and reimagined in Unreal Engine 5. While I'm sad the game just been delayed once more, I think everyone should give GSC game world a slack obvious reasons. I hope they manage to polish and optimize the game and I can't wait to put my hands on this one. So keep an eye out. It might release on 20 November this year, hopefully. But yeah, the game will cost around 600... Uh, 60 bucks. Pursue your dream of an aviation career with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. Mm. This is the second most anticipated game for me this year. This brand new simulator is designed to take advantage of the latest technologies in simulation, cloud, machine learning, graphics and gaming to create the most sophisticated, immersive and awe-inspiring flight simulator of all time. To achieve this unprecedented level of accuracy, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 is powered by the significantly evolved Asobo Studio engine. This is the biggest plane sim, I doubt any other sim can get even close to its popularity. because the entire planet is your playground you know and you can fly all kinds of vehicles in a multitude of ways you want to just practice a challenging landing with a specific aircraft or you just want to do bush trips with cool looking general aviation planes or you fancy some of the big jet trip across the ocean you can do it all lately it even has helicopters and military jets what is a turn off for many people are the third party add-ons and their prices but let's be real you don't want most of them because they are not that great anyway. But when you come across a good one from time to time, I think it's well worth it. The biggest change in this edition I'm hyped about is the career mode. I hope it's well implemented as most of us lack purpose in the sim when flying and I mean it's fun to fly around aimlessly but a purpose and some sort of progression goes a long way, trust me. The Steam page is not up yet but the game is set to release on 19th November this year. I know a lot of people are just upset the 2020 edition of the game was supposed to be updated for eight years what can i say most of the add-ons will work in this year's edition and that's the most important thing for me if they say the engine limits have been reached with the old game i believe them so yeah see you in the skies pilot hopefully this year
Broken Arrow is a large-scale real-time modern warfare tactics game. A unique army building system and deep units customization tools allow for endless replayability. With over 200 realistic military units and technologies, each battle is more immersive than ever before. The base game features both the American and Russian factions, each containing four unique sub-factions like the Marines, Airborne and more. Broken Arrow brings the genre to a whole new level by combining the complexity of joint forces war game with a typical real-time tactics action pack gameplay. I played an open beta for this game and the thing that sets it apart from Warno, for example, is the ability to upgrade your units as you see fit. That for me adds a very cool layer of customization to my decks and makes the experience different every time. And get this, the scenario editor used to create the missions of the campaign will be available to the community to create their own scenarios and share them on the workshop. Mm. It includes a visual scripting tool allowing you to create complete scenarios with cutscenes and dialogue without ever writing a single line of code. That's so cool. So yeah, this is very good news as the games that offer modding support and editors have a long life. The game doesn't have a release date yet and no price. So yeah, keep an eye out for it, wishlist it and fingers crossed it releases this year. But hopefully not in November. Please develop, expand and advance your city in a society survival game set 30 years after an apocalyptic blizzard ravaged Earth. In Frostpunk 2, you face not only the perils of never-ending winter, but also the powerful factions that watch your every step inside the council hall. Frostpunk 2 elevates the city survival genre to a new level. Take the role of a steward and lead your city through the cascade of calamities taking place in a post-apocalyptic, snowy setting. Build that city districts with their string of endless needs and demands. Navigate through conflicting interests of factions that populate your metropolis. As the needs of the city grow and the factional power is at its core crisis. The you've promised. Can we all receive equal rations? Hospitals are not a place for experiments. Only you can steer the society towards an uncertain future. If this game's presentation will be as good as the first one, I'm down. The game is set to release on 20 September. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Three games I want to play release in just two days. The game costs 45 bucks and if you like the first Frostpunk or games like They Are Billions or Manor Lords, get this when it releases as it will be epic, I'm pretty sure. Honorable mentions are Assetto Corsa Evo that doesn't have a release date yet and this is why I didn't cover this as I have a feeling it will get delayed to 2025. Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 that comes out in less than a week. The controversial Throne and Liberty that's set to release on 1st of October. Call of Duty Black Ops 6000 whatever. And the new Train Sim World. <laughs> because why not vomit another one in 2024, am I right? So yeah, I'm not too interested in these last ones. This is why they're not present in the video, but you might be, so there you go. A reminder to clear your schedule if you are a fan of this. Looks like 20 September will be a mess for me at least. Thank you for watching, subscribe and all that and until next time, take care and see ya.